Hi, my name is Eric. Welcome to the CHC Navigation. Today, we're going to show you about the new product from the M3D production line, the RS10. The RS10 is CHC Navigation's high precision RDK with Snap Fusion measurement system, and it has the ability to capture data also inside doors and outdoors in multiple environments. I know many of you already have your product, and through this video, we will show you how to use the RS10 for the outfield data collections. And now, we're going to show you the package kit of our RS10. Let's kick off with what's in the RS10 product package. The package includes the RS10 unit, a USB to Type-C cable, a USB flash drive, lens cleaning webs, device batteries, battery charger, an operation tablet, tablet holder. At the same time, we also have the chest support brand kit. Before we go to work, we need to check if the battery is fully charged. Press the button on the battery, 4 guys on stands for the fully charge. So we take out the main unit, open the back cover, and install the battery. After we check the battery, we can start the installation of the RS10. There are three modes for the RS10, the handheld mode, the range pole mode, and the chest bracket mode. When installing the handle, make sure it's securely locked to prevent the device from falling off during the scanning. And if you need to set the device down on the flat surface, just attach the handle base to the bottom. At 1.9 kg, the RS10 is a guided scanner on the market, so it's more convenient to do short measurement. For the longer time span using, we need to use the chest support bracket for it. Wearing the reflective sides facing back like this. Fasten all the bucket here and adjust it to the comfortable side. And this is a swing arm from our backpack system. So we install the swing arm using screws to adjust the position. And we can use other screws for vertical moving. So we install the RS10 on the swing arm. And we insert the tablet holder into the swing arm. And then we put tap gear on the tap gear holder. Remember, when we're in this mode, we need to keep it in hands and to keep it from dropping on the ground. The chest support can really take your goals off, can really make you comfortable for scanning for hours. Finally, in some special cases, we need to use the range pole for the RS10. Take off the handle, attach the range pole to the RS10, and tighten it up. And we insert the bracket and the tap gate. Finally, we we'll switch to the range pole mode. With the range pole mode, you can scan the things you cannot see, like tunnels up and obstacles. Some pipes can only be scanned by one side, but with the range pole, we can scan them all. When we are using the range pole mode, there are two things we need to pay attention to. First, don't bend it on the ground as it could damage your RS10. Second, keep checking it doesn't loosen up during long scans because of the rotating laser's head torque. Once everything's set up, press and hold the power button for 5 seconds to switch it on. The RS10 will run as quick as self-check, flashing rapidly before setting it on a steady green light when it's ready to roll. Then you can log in the course account, connect the device's Wi-Fi, have a real quick firmware check. Open the Smart Go software. Select the Skype mode. Click on the setting icon in the top right corner to enter the settings interface. Then click on the icon to top left corner to enter the account login interface. And enter your account and password to log in. Click on the Wi-Fi's name to connect to the device's Wi-Fi. And these are the, all the steps you need to do before we go to work. Next, we're going to show you how to record data for the RS10. And CHC Navigation has created two different modes for the RS10, OneKey Control and the Smart Go Software Control. Let's dive into the simplest way for the RS10, OneKey Control Mode. At this mode, you just need to press the power buttons and you can check the receiver statues. So, let us walk through the steps together. The first step is to turn on the device. You just gonna press the power button here, it will go to the self-examination mode. So at this time, the indicator light will start flashing quickly. So after the examination is done, the guys will go on socket. Next up, we need to initialize the device. Short press the power button here, 
the device will go to the initialization mode. Hold it steady and point it to an area with the last features for about two seconds. When the light stays on socket, this means you are good to go. Now, we are starting collecting data. The light will switch to a slow flash. That means your IS-10 is gathering all those important data points. To stop collecting, it's just another quick press of the power button. The indicator light will stay on again and showing you that it's finished collecting. Keep in mind that the one kick control mode is for urgent situations. So there are three things you need to pay attention to. Firstly, you cannot log in the course account, which means that you don't have the real-time coordinates. Secondly, without a tablet, you cannot see the control point and you cannot see the data. However, during the recording, you still can connect it to a tablet and still can add control point and see the data. For more detailed data collections, we can use the Smart Go software on this tablet and this is how we do it. First off, you need to connect your IS10 to the Smart Go app and make sure your tablet is connected to the device's Wi-Fi and no other apps are still in the connection. Then, if you need absolute coordinates of your point cloud, go into the RTK settings and log into your course account. When you log in the course account, there are a couple of things you need to keep in mind. First, make the port settings the same as the coordinate system outcomes. If you're not logging the course account, you still can get the final result using the PPK or the control point optimizations incorporate. Finally, please avoid logging the same account on multiple devices at the same time. It will cause disconnections from the account. Moving on to setting up your project, you need to click the collection icon and give your project a name. Next, you get to choose the scene you need to work in. Remember, the project name needs to stick together and numbers. And always remember to select the right mode for the indoors work and outdoors work. For the next step, initializing the devices. Just stabilize for two seconds after creating your project. And this will finish automatically. If you want to aim at things with a lot of features, like tall buildings or uneven rocks, watch out for the things that could block these features. Then, it's time to add control points. Point the metal tape of the device's handle on the wrench pole at the control point you want to collect. On Smart Go, hit Add Control Point. Choose your operation mode and type in the control point name and confirm. Adding control points does two great things. It increases your accuracy of the data and converts the data from relative to absolute coordinates. Just a heads up, if you're using the wrench pole mode, you need to input the pole height, and that's not necessary for handheld or chest support mode. Also, try to keep your control point name consistent. And remember, if you're doing coordinate conversion, you need at least four control points. Finally, to wrap up your project, just click the code icon. Wait a few seconds and you will close out without hanging around. The RS10 unit can hold only one battery at a time, but don't worry, it's equipped with a super capacitor that supports hot swiping. This means you can change the battery without shutting down. Here's how it works. When you put out the battery, the tap will show a 60 second warning to swipe the battery. Make sure you swipe it within those 60 seconds. After changing the battery, keep the device oriented just as before to swipe for about 5 seconds. Then hit the button to confirm the change and keep on working. If you run into any trouble with the device and you are connected to the internet, you can quickly upload the Smart Go and RS10 logs to the CHC Navigation Cloud Platform. This is super helpful for the RD team to analyze and fix the issue. Here's how you update firmware. When you are online, after connecting to the RS10 device's Wi-Fi, if there is an update available, you will see a firmware update pop up. Click Update Now, download the latest firmware, and after it downloads, hit the firmware upgrade button to complete the process. This is all the contents about today's video. If you want to learn more about the software part of the RS10 and other products from the CHD Navigation, please subscribe to the channel. And see you in the next time.